Hello. While I'm still working on trying to fly by flapping my wings and getting some interesting results uh, recently that I will show you uh, not far away from now, I am still going and coming back from my work by bike. And while I'm doing my bike, my bicycling, I have one problem, is that I cannot, uh, I don't have uh, the side lights that a car could have. So when a biker wants to turn, he has to put his hand on the side, on the right side to turn right, or on the left side to turn left, just to show to the other guys on the road that he wants to turn right or left. This is a problem because in certain cases uh, you need both hands to be able to turn effi efficiently. Uh, for instance, when you are on a big hill, you need both, both hands on, uh, uh, to help you to climb on the, the hill. And there are other reasons as well. So I've been thinking why do those lights that cars have and motorbikes have, why, why do bikes not have those lights? And so I was thinking about the system to develop these lights and I want to show it to you. So to have those lights installed by yourself, you need a bike for it, uh, at first with a power supply, a dynamo on the bike. I have it a uh, central dynamo on my front wheel, so if it turns there is some power which is generated by this dynamo. So that's the first thing you need. This will give you power and you will get the power that is coming here to, uh, to power this light and you will take some power here. I will show you uh, where afterwards. There are other things you need to do this as well. You should be able to solder, to uh, put two fibers, put them together, put something in it so there is elect electric uh, current that can go from one fiber to the other and that it goes together. I will not explain you how to solder, there are other tutorials to do it on YouTube or on other sites. I suggest you to, to go and read those, those tutorials that done by people that can solder better than me probably and uh, that explain it probably better than, I, that, than what I could do. But to solder you, so you need a, a solder system, here I have a so a heat, heating part, the hot part of the soldering, there is some soldering wire, so that's just what you need to solder. You need some electric wires because you will have this power uh, going from the dynamo. Uh, you should be able to, to channel it to the handle that I put here and then channel it back to the lights that are here on the back. And uh, I should install some other lights uh, on the front also, which I didn't do, but it's easy to, when you can do it on the back, you can do it uh, on the front, uh, it's quite easy. So, you need light, and for this I use LEDs. Uh, I put uh, yellow LEDs, because the turning LEDs in, the, in our country, and I think it's uh, quite worldwide, it's yellow or orange, so you need the good color LEDs. Um, you need some uh, tools to prepare the, the wires. I use a screwdriver and this, which is uh, something who, uh, with which you can cut the wires and also uh, remove the plastic part on this wire without uh, harming the, the copper thing inside. In, fr in French we call it a denudeur. It's a common tool for soldering. And then uh, these lights, uh, the back lights, I wanted them to be quite on the side of the back. So uh, you need a support to put those uh, lights on the, on the side. I use this uh, carbon fiber tube. Uh, it's not required to have carbon fiber, but because of my other job, I have uh, carbon fiber spare parts. And any tube could uh, do uh, the trick, um, and that's it for the stuff we need. Oh yes, I need also a switch. A switch that is something, I, I showed here the schematic. So you have a handle, 
you have a box and then three uh, connections. And the handle can be in three positions, so here, uh, A, B, and C. Uh, it stays in the position you choose, so if you put it in A, it stays in A if you don't do anything. And if it's in A, those two uh, uh, connections are connected inside, and this one gets a loop. In B, every connection is alone, not connected to any other, and in C, those two connections are connected and this one stays alone. That's what I have. You could have this uh, being symmetrical, so A being replaced by C and vice versa. It depends what you find. All those uh, tools, uh, you can find it in a good electric shop for uh, a low price. This is only 4 euros, maybe 5 or 6 dollars. Uh, I have 25 LEDs. Uh, the wires that uh, I had for 2 or 3 euros, I don't remember exactly, so 3, 4 dollars. And uh, this switch was for less than 1 euro, less than 2 dollars. And this is a spare part, so two spare parts. Don't, well, you can buy a tube, uh, I, I would buy then a PVC or something like that. Uh, so this is spare part, it's free. And then I added some uh, aluminium uh, protections. And so aluminum uh, spare part is easy to find. Use an old can or whatever, or you could use a, a beautiful aluminum thing. And I use also uh, a bit of duct tape uh, to uh, glue everything and also to make the electric isolation between the parts I have been soldering. So that's for what you need. How is it installed around the back? So here I have my power supply on the front wheel. There is a cable which was installed on the bike at the beginning that went from this uh, dynamo to the front light. And so I just cut this cable somewhere in the middle, uh, uh, disconnecting the two parts of this cable and uh, preparing the wires to solder them together and get the tension, the, the power from this dynamo which was planned initially for this front light to get an additional tension ready for my stuff. And then I have to distribute it. How, how is the electronic circuit? So I have my power source, power supply, the two uh, fibers. I, I will use, sorry, I will use one of them as a reference, which will go to the light. The other one will go to the switch. Um, it will go, uh, it will be connected here in the middle and then the left one will go to a bunch of LEDs and the right one to another bunch of LEDs. I will put it this way and so I have all my LEDs like this and the other way around and uh, here also, so here also a bunch of LEDs. So, uh, and if uh, this switch is on A, then these are connected, then these LEDs are on, are lit, and so they, they, they are on. If it's in B, nothing is connected, nothing goes. If it's in C, uh, this side is uh, connected, so this side can uh, have power and is lit. So, that's the electronic sch uh, schematic, it's very easy. Uh, as an electronic schematic. There are some little tricks though. The first trick is that my battery, my uh, dynamo, my power supply, is an alternative power supply. So to have all the power to, uh, being used for the LED, because the current goes to the right and then on another part of the supply to the left, I need the LED to be uh, connected in both directions because at one moment this will be the positive part of the supply and at the other moment it will be this or this part which will be positive. And so the LED should be able to go into one direction and in the opposite direction. That's a little trick. But the other trick is that I want to have so light at the back but also I want to have a reminder here uh, at the, uh, around the handle. So if I uh, choose to go to the left, 
there is something here that is uh, on, and that reminds me that, I, uh, that uh, the left light is on, so I don't forget to switch it off when I finish my turn, uh, or I don't forget that I, I'm still uh, warning people that I want to go to the left. And because when the handle goes to the left, it's this part that is connected, I have to uh, put the LED that uh, shines on the left uh, on the same size, the side uh, of the switch than the, the, the left side of the switch. So this uh, is in fact physically linked to a LED which is here and that goes back to the neutral power which is here. So in practice, uh, uh, physically, uh, the part that is uh, here, around the switch, so you have this cable that goes here, with here a LED that is connected on this side, a little LED, and that then goes back to this part of the supply, and from this there is another LED that is going here, and that is also connected here just to have, when this go to the left, it's in fact this LED that is on, so the one that gets power from here, and when this go to the right, uh, this LED should be on, so the one that is powered from here. It's a little trick, an additional one. For the rest, the wires go, so supply is here, so a wire go upwards to the switch, uh, to supply as well the LED as the switch, and then a wire go to the back with a bone signal, so two wires for these two wires and another wire which is this one and this connects to the back and then uh, those nets are on. So I just show you a closer view of my lights, so a bit of power first, going left and going Right, up, right, and left. So, a closer view of the control. So, here I go left. Uh, that's right. Okay, and I need some power. Voilà. That's for one side. One more. So, that's when you turn left, and that's when you turn right. I would have power, so right and left. I did an additional trick here with the aluminum cap. The aluminum cap has uh, two reasons. The first, it's uh, to protect from uh, shocks I could uh, do while someone could uh, hurt this. And the other, the second reason, which is a bit more important, it protects the LED from the light going from everywhere. So the LED light uh, is a bit in the dark and when, when it goes on it's easier to see which is important for people you want to warn that they really see what you are doing so these are my my system for having uh, turn light for my bike uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you in any case for your attention